Hello, hello. Um, today we are going to continue the adventure with Nabu computer. Um, looks like it uh, became pretty popular. Um, the machine he is, you know, the interest in the machine is picking up. Uh, quite a few uh, YouTubers have, you know, have uh, picked up um, one of those machines as well. And everyone is experimenting. Um, there is uh, there is quite a quite a few uh, interesting you know updates re in, in regards to the to the Nabu computer you know for one um, Adrian's from Adrian from the um, Adrian's digital uh, basement he featured the computer on his channel uh, obviously his channel is very popular so lots of lots of people have seen it now um, the sell on, on eBay is in progress, so there's more and more of those computers uh, hitting the market and people are uh, playing with, that, with them. Um, as we all know, the computer by itself is uh, pretty much useless. So until somebody comes up with a decent operating system or some kind of way to update the, um, the code on that box, it's, it's pretty useless. But uh, of course, because of the interest, there's lots of people experimenting and doing things, um, you know, trying to get the, get us closer to a working solution. Um, this channel, uh, DJ Sirs, uh, he's uh, making really good progress. What he is doing is he's emulating the actual adapter, so that the you know the the network that um, that Nabu is supposed to be talking to. So he's uh, pretending to be the adapter, and uh, you know he's trying to. Um, get the NABU to fetch the code from outside and execute it. So that's one of the approaches. Um, the other approach would be to actually look at the, the code on NABU itself. Um, so, you know, what's, uh, what's inside NABU? You know, we know NABU is, is running Z80 CPU um, and there's a socket for the ROM, which has the basic, you know, the sort of very basic code, um, sort of firmware um, of, of NABU. Um, my one came with a with a 4K ROM, so a 2732 EEPROM, but the socket is actually capable of accepting larger uh, EEPROM. So, really, for the experiment, um, best thing would be to figure out what what's you know what the code is, and you know can we somehow use it? What can be done with this code? Um, so, as you can see, uh, you know um, I've got the EEPROM in the NABU itself. So I'm going to power off my NABU, and what we'll do is first of all we're going to pull out that EEPROM out of the socket um, and we're going to dump and have a look what's, um, you know, what's, what's actually inside, yeah? what is the code inside the machine. Now, because we're going to be experimenting with, uh, with the EEPROM and with uh, the contents of the content of, the, of that EEPROM uh, and because we're going to be putting you know, things in and out of the computer frequently, uh, what I recommend doing is temporarily replacing the socket or you know making a way to be able to put the EEPROMs in and out. Um, so I have this um, sort of um, adapter uh, as if socket at the top that you can easily uh, lock and unlock. Um, I sold it directly some um, sharp pins into the socket. So what I can do now is I can insert this into the computer and what this allows me to do is very quickly uh, take the EEPROM um, in and out of the computer. Yeah? So it makes the whole process um, uh, very, uh, very easy. Uh, let's have a look. Let me show you. Let me show you the actual computer. One sec. Okay, so let me power it up. Okay, so you know, with that uh, with that changed EEPROM, I'm uh, sorry, with that socket in the uh, you know with that special adapter ZIF adapter, we can still power on the computer. Everything is working as expected. But that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to have a quick look uh, at that uh, ROM and see what we can figure out there. So let's take the um, the EEPROM into our computer. I'll take it out of the socket. Well, let's power off the computer first. Okay, so on my computer, I'm just going to use the um, Mini Pro EEPROM reader. And what we'll do is we'll dump the firmware that is on that EEPROM uh, into a file. 
so let's pick 2732 doesn't really matter we'll read it and save the file as nabu source so now that we have the actual source uh, binary file we can have a quick look at the file itself um, there's not really much we can do with this file at this point of time i'm just going to open it in um, hex editor you can see this is um, this is all the uh, you know machine code for the z80 cpu that uh, runs the code um, let's try to turn this code into something more useful which is the assembly the actual assembler code um, for that we need to perform what's called a deassembly so kind of reverse the binary back to assembly and then we can recompile it back with our changes or with whatever we want to do with it um, i'm going to use a online um, disassembler uh, there's many ways of doing it but you know i'm just doing a very quick hack here um, so i'm just going to get um, get our binary file that we got from the rom of the nabu um, and i'm going to use this online disassembler I'm going to select platform to be the Z80 and start address 00, 00 hexadecimal. That's fine. And what it will do, it will generate an assembly version of the binary file that we have. Um, so that's kind of, you know, converting things back into, into assembly. Let's save this um, assembly, uh, assembly fi uh, file. Uh, we can call it source text file that's fine so that's step one step two um, after we make changes ultimately we will want to um, we will want to recompile the new version of the code back to a binary and for that we need a compiler and again you know in this case i'm using this um, sja um, uh, uh, sjasm plus <laughs> um, assembl uh, assembler so you just download the the windows um, binary and uh, install it on your or extract it on your windows machine and you'll get this executable file which is the assembly uh, which is the actual assembly um, so to uh, reassemble this file after we make changes so let's have a look first of all on the file uh, the file that we got from the from the disassemble um, so this file is kind of actually a listing. It's not. Uh, it's not just the assembly version. This is a listing listing of the of the file because it has both the the actual data. You know, we have the addresses here, the data, and the actual command. Um, if we try to recompile this uh, later, this is not going to work because that's uh, not the right format for the assembler. Um, so what we need to do in here, we just need to get rid of everything um, from the, to the left of this column. So I'm just going to uh, highlight everything in here and just leave the right hand side column because the right hand side column has got all the assembly details, yeah? uh, assembly commands. Um, so if we ever want to do any changes and we want to recompile, we need to have a version of this file that is pure assembly, nothing else inside. So uh, I'm just using Notepad++ and the trick in here to select the, just the stuff on the left hand side. Most of the assemblers will need a, a space before the command um, so that labels can be inserted. Um, so I've just put a space as well. So this is pretty much our source code in assembly version. I'm just going to save it as a, um, as a version in, um, in assembly. Uh, let me just call it uh, nabu source asm. Okay, we can, by the way, tell the Notepad++, plus plus, um, we can tell it to display. Okay, it already recognized that it's an assembly, so it's showing us. Y you know, this assembly is kind of useless. It's not really that useful at this point of time. It needs all the comments. It needs to have the subroutines divided and named to make it really useful. But at least we'll verify if the entire process of going out of the binary, of the original binary, then we have the source in assembly format. Now we'll try to recompile it back and then put it into the NABU and see if it works. Um, so for that, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
um, we're going to go to into this uh, window where we have the assembler program sja sm plus um, we want output um, our new file to be uh, nabu nabu uh, let's have a look one second nabu underscore chris dot binary and nabu source assembly so we have the output file that is going to be a compiled version or recompiled in this case version of the of the code we have the source code in assembly and um, we have uh, we have the output file to be nabu uh, chris dot binary so as you can see this com this compile uh, this compiled fine so we have now uh, we have now a um, an output file that is a compiled version or recompiled version of the nabu firmware and we could now start making changes in here in the source version of the code and recompile it and put it back onto the nabu so that's what we're going to try now so we have the um, the, the, the recompiled version of uh, Nabu's firmware. So next thing we'll do is we'll try to put it back into, uh, into the Nabu. Let's see if that binary actually works. Um, so for that, what we'll do is we'll reprogram our, um, our EEPROM with the code that we just recompiled. Um, now, of course, the EEPROM would have to be, um, would have to be erased um, so we don't want to mess around with EEPROMs. What we'll do is we'll use um, an EEPROM. Um, so this is a Winbond um, W27C512. It's a larger, a larger um, EEPROM. So what we have to be careful about is um, you know how the connections uh, within the NABU are are made. So we know that there's a bunch of pins inside NABU that um, are connected to VCC. Uh, for this uh, Winbond um, Winbond W27C512, let's have a look at um, Winbond. Let's have a look at uh, pinout. So we know this Winbond, um, this this um, this EEPROM um, has lines A15, A13, A14 in use. So we need to handle them somehow. So in the NABU, we know that um, some of those additional pins that are not used on a on a on a 8K EEPROM are permanently hooked up to five volts. So what we can do is we can um, figure out what would be the starting address of the code if it was sitting in a larger EEPROM. And so for that, you know, I'm going to the binary uh, on, on the calculator, and I'm going to say that that line A15 on this socket is permanently hooked up to uh, 5 volts. Uh, line A14 is also permanently hooked, hooked up to 5 volts. So I'm going to do one for that. Uh, line A13 is also permanently hooked up to 5 volts. The rest of the lines um, are normally connected. So, um, so that's the 4 bits, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's another 4 bits. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So altogether, it tells us in hexadecimal that if we plug a large 64k EEPROM into the socket, all the addressing is going to start at address E000 hexadecimal. So what we'll do now is we'll open um, our newly compiled code uh, in the EEPROM uh, programmer software. We will locate it in the memory address starting at E000 hexadecimal. So that um, will allow NABU to actually boot from that code. Um, just so that we can recognize that, um, that this is, uh, you know, the, the changed code, what we can do is have a quick look at um, some of those error messages that NABU normally shows. So let's look at, uh, for example, the adapter. This is the, the, the message, the adapter failure message that NABU normally shows when it doesn't uh, communicate with the uh, with the networking upstream so we'll change this message to hello um, hello world and with those changes we'll just program uh, we'll program the eeprom with this new code 
Okay, let's take this, excuse me, let's take this to our Nabu and try to boot it, um, try to boot it with the new code. As you can see, see Nabu boots up, no problem. It's displaying ROM failure. Well, we expect that it's gonna display ROM failure because we've just modified the ROM. Um, you know, we changed that adapter failure into a hello world. Um, so Nabu noticed. So we know that there's some kind of checksum or some kind of way Nabu verifies if the, if the EEPROM has been modified. And that's why it's showing us this message. So we'll have to, in the future, figure out how to, um, you know, how to, um, find the checksum unless we decide to rewrite completely this whole firmware that is on, on Nabu. Um, but after, you know, after Nabu boots up, normally it does the check for the, for the adapter and it displays the, the adapter failure error message. In our case, it's not displaying hello, hello world. So this is how, we, how we've managed to get a assembly version of the Nabu firmware. It's not very, very useful. We know that um, the assembly version right now uh, looks a little bit, um, you know, looks a little bit, um, uh, you know, not as useful <laughs> as we would hope. Uh, so let me just very quickly uh, show you again the source code the way it is right now. As you can see, the source code doesn't have any comments, doesn't have any, you know, any um, routine names. See, it's making calls to those to this to this area. So we would have to you know, somebody will have to go through this code, comment it, uh, you know, separate the different routines um, to make it um, to make it sort of useful. But at least I've given you an idea, you know, I can I can decompile it to assembly. I can recompile it back. I can put it back into the NABU and it um, and it works. So it's it's probably a starting point for someone um, to start working on on a proper firmware. So I hope this was uh, kind of useful. If you're new to the channel, uh, subscribe. Um, you know, there'll be more uh, contents like this um, in the future. And uh, thanks for watching.